Good evening. Before we get started tonight, we have a bittersweet uh, deal to take care of. We have some uh, <coughs> retirements that we are going to talk about. And I ask the counselors to meet me down front, and we'll do this right now. They couldn't all be here tonight, so we're going to talk about the ones who aren't here first. <laughs> Nan Warren began, began working in the Revenue Division of the City Clerk's Office on January 16, 1996. Nan then transferred to the Public Works Department and worked as a secretary, one, and was then promoted to the position of Public Works Office Administrator, two. Nan retired on January 10, 2020, after 24 years of service, and we wish her all the best. Jim Wixom began working for the city in the Public Works Department on January 13, 1977. However, prior to beginning his actual employment, he began as a temporary employee. During his tenure with the city, Jim held the positions of maintenance worker one, maintenance worker two, lead man, foreman, superintendent, and is retiring on Friday, January 31, 2020. Jim will be leaving his current position of assistant director of public works operations after 43 years of service. And even though he's not here, I think we ought to give those two a kind of a big hand. <laughs> I don't like saying goodbye to people. If, if I was retiring, I just probably wouldn't show up either. <laughs> it's just too sad. But we do have three brave people who are here tonight. The first one I go to church with. Susan Winters began working in the finance department on August 4, 2008, and then transferred to the revenue division of the city clerk's office and worked as a cashier until her retirement date of December 31, 2019. Is that right? Susan retired after 11 years of service. You want to come up and get your award? Eileen Van Kirk, we know who that is, worked for the Parks and Recreation Department as the Youth Volunteer Coordinator, Parks and Recreation Programs Coordinator from March 2, 2009 until her retirement date of January 10, 2020. Eileen served over 10 years with the city. Would you come up and join us, please? Lee, who I got acquainted with on the elevator up, coming up here, worked for the Parks and Recreation Department from August 27, 2007 until his retirement date of December 31, 2019. Terry retired in the position of Parks and Recreation Maintenance Worker 2. Terry served the city for over 12 years. Would you come up, please? Thank you, 
you. And then if you would, you all want to take a group picture, Mia, of our retirees, that would be good. And then we'll shake everybody's hand. <laughs> She's like, I'm oh, that's your bag. Yeah. But, but show it up. No, don't put it up yet. <laughs> Come around here and let us all <laughs> congratulate you. They've been good workers, and we're going to miss all of them, I know. And now we will call to order uh, the January 27, 2020 meeting of the um, Muskogee Municipal Authority. Roll call, please. Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Ivory <coughs> Dan. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Uh, item one. Consider approval of refinancing Oklahoma Water Resource Board loans or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Uh, yes, um, uh, Ms. Chair and uh, members of the authority, uh, we have several loans outstanding with the Oklahoma Water Resources Board. This is how we, ref uh, how we finance a lot of our um, water and sewer projects. Um, we work with OWRB to try and find the best interest rates, and they have uh, found, uh, basically renegotiated these, uh, this debt at a lower rate, and they're wanting to pass that on to us in one way or the other. Um, so they've given us options that are outlined in your packet. We have chosen the option that saves us the most money, which is, allows us to reduce our debt service over time. Um, so over the next, uh, uh, we have the two separate loans. Uh, they'll save us about $260,000 over the course of of those loans by choosing this option and we do recommend approval i'll be happy to answer any questions move for approval second any discussion roll call deputy mayor wayne johnson yes evelyn hibbs yes stephanie morgan yes marlon coleman yes ivory van yes Derek reed yes alex reynolds yes jamie stout yes mayor janie boydston yes and the motion carries that concludes that agenda, and we will go into the January 27, 2020 meeting of the Muskogee City Council. Uh, we stand for the invocation by Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson, followed by the flag salute. If you would bow with me in prayer tonight. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come to you this evening, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you provide for us each and every day. We're so thankful for the beautiful day that you have given us today. We're thankful, dear Lord, for the firemen, the police, and the non-uniform. We ask, dear Lord, that you would just put your hand upon our city and protect us each and every day. Uh, dear Lord, we ask that you would give uh, the council uh, the wisdom they need tonight uh, to make the decisions uh, for our community. Uh, as we're going through this election season, I, I ask that you would help each and every one of the candidates that uh, we would uh, know the reason why we're running. It's to serve our community and to serve you. And these things we ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all have had the minutes of the special calls. Roll call. No, we're all here. 
<laughs> Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Now you have uh, had the special call city council meeting of January 6, 2020, and the city council regular session January 13, 2020. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. And the motion carries. You know, uh, we didn't have a public works and finance meeting last week because of the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Uh, so we don't have a consent agenda tonight. We'll go right into our regular agenda, item one. Consider approval of amendment to ordinance number 4089A of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma, amending chapter two, administration, amending article five, boards and commissions, amending division 16, contractors pre-qualification board, sections 2-550 definitions, 2-551 board membership, 2-552 general requirements by providing for repealer, severability, and declaring an emergency or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley. Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, <coughs> this is a recently approved ordinance. Um, and as we got into the um, nuts and bolts of it in the application, we, we determined that um, the previous ordinance included too many uh, phases of work um, that would make it very cum cumbersome for the city to get work done on, on smaller things like plumbing, HVAC, and things. So um, this is a revised ordinance that basically applies it to public works projects, streets, water, sewer, that type of work um, for, to, to keep the, um, the other stuff from being so cumbersome as far as getting work done within the city. Um, and we recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries, and we do need an emergency. Motion to declare an emergency. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the emergency passes. Item two. Consider approval of ordinance number 4088A of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma, amending chapter 14, animals, amending article six, pet owner outreach, adding section 14-42, spay and neuter assistance program, adding section 14-43, responsible pet ownership education and information program, providing for repealer severability and setting an effective date or take other necessary action. Councilor Coleman. Yes, Mayor and Council, we have been working uh, with Mr. Tucker, Mr. Stout, and several others about increasing our ability to manage our pet population. We are on a good path now with the animal shelter, and we thought that the next available opportunity for us to complement that would look at a spay and neutering program, and Tyler Evans is here to address that on tonight, and we'll hear his presentation as well as other necessary comments from Mr. Tucker. Ms. Mayor, Council. Yes. Give us your name and address, please. My name is Tyler Evans, <laughs> the uh, Director of Emergency Management, also over the Animal Shelter and Code Enforcement. I live at 6 Beckman Road here in Muskogee. Great. Okay. Um, we can get into the ordinance here in a little bit, but I wanted to bring some stats to you guys from last year that about our animal shelter and the intakes and everything. Uh, as of last year, the 2019 annual stats, we took in 1,495 animals into the shelter. And that's either people dropping their animals off to us or our animal control officers having to pick up the animals and bring them to the shelter. Out of the almost 1,500, we took 1,171 were total live animals out. Now, some of those people drop off very sick animals that don't make it. Uh, they can't take care of them. Or we have to pick up injured dogs and cats off the streets that are alive when we pick them up and unfortunately they end up passing with us. 
Uh, some of those animals are aggressive animals that we cannot adopt out that have to be unfortunately euthanized. So that leads us to an 81% save rate here in Muskogee at our animal shelter. 19% um, of those being unadoptable. Now going into the ordinance, uh, the spay and neuter program, this allows for at least every single person in Muskogee to have 50% off a spay or neuter for their pets. If they qualify for a state assistant program, uh, such as the Medicaid, the food stamp program, uh, WIC, temporary assistance to needies, the TANF, they qualify for 100% uh, off a spare neuter uh, for their pet. In this ordinance, we also put in a microchipping, uh, I'll say requirement. Uh, but if you come to us to have your pet spared, spayed or neutered, we're gonna go ahead and microchip the animal for you, register it to you. That way when our officers go out in the field and they have to pick up a lost dog, somebody has called in and said, hey, this dog is running loose. Our hope is to be able to scan that dog and take it back to the rightful owner, not have to take it to the shelter, not have to do an intake, not have to feed it and house it for a week until somebody comes and adopts it. We're able to take it straight back to that owner. So that's our hope with the microchipping program. And that's gonna be free if you get your pet spayed or neutered through us. We also plan to offer that program at $10. I think we can buy the chips. I've done a little bit of research, uh, roughly between five and $10 uh, a chip. So we wanna offer this program to the public at a very low cost just pretty much enough to we can you know continue rebuying supplies and restocking our supplies um, i hope next year about this time once we get the shelter up and going here within a couple of weeks maybe a month our goal is to have the uh, spare nude program at our shelter well people will bring their pets to us on a designated day maybe a thursday shakota does theirs on thursdays they have a vet that comes in and they perform the procedure there so people can bring their pets and have it spayed or neutered either half off or completely paid for for free. So a year from now when we do this, uh, again, I hope to see these numbers go up, that you know our intake is going down, uh, our return to owners are, is also increasing. Uh, everybody's done a really good job. Councilor Coleman, I wanna thank you for that. Uh, Weldon Stout, Mr. Tucker, it's been a team effort to get this ordinance put together and uh, to get our shelter headed in the right direction. Somebody have any questions? Sounds great. Uh, Move for approval. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? I'd just like to thank those that have donated to the animal shelter. This would really not be possible without the donation that we received for the new animal shelter, along with the matching funding of the of the foundation, um, and all those that uh, really helped on the layout and the design and the rebid of the of the animal shelter, uh, because. Uh, the whole view of it is how can we get control of our animal population and this is yes, definitely sir. the first step and it was all in the layout and design of our animal shelter so thank you very much for the report and for all those that continue to donate to our animal shelter because uh, they're they're part of our community thank you okay. any discussion from anybody else roll call deputy mayor wayne johnson yes evelyn hibbs yes Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item three. Consider approval of resolution 2796, accepting a dedication deed for an 80-foot wide right-of-way as described in the dedication deed to allow Utah Avenue to be extended from Hilldale Springs Drive South to Peak Boulevard or take other necessary action. Garvin. Mayor, members of the council, I'm letting him bring this PowerPoint up real quick so I can show you the area I'm talking about. It is one listed as, uh, uh, it has item number three on the agenda item. That one, deed dedication. Down one more, right there. Okay. Mayor, members of the council, uh, if you look at the property on the at the intersection of York and Peak, there's been several developers in the past who's wanted to develop that property as a retail uh, development. Uh, more particularly, this area that's highlighted in blue. 
and you can see on the two maps in front of you, one, one's just an aerial map, the other is an atlas sheet, but they're the same location. Uh, this has not been developed, and the main reason uh, stated by potential developers is that any retail development of any size would need access to both York and Peak Boulevard. The problem with that is that ODOT has limits of no access along Peak Boulevard, basically from York Street west to Burbank Street. Now, with that being said, the, a couple of the uh, budding property owners did make application to the Oklahoma Department of Transportation to get the limits of no access removed from that site. Uh, they were unsuccessful. However, during that conversation, ODOC has stated if there is a city street that intersects Peak Boulevard, they would uh, definitely look at uh, removing the limits of no access. With that being said, we then contacted uh, McCaff, uh, Muskogee, Commun Muskogee County Community Action Foundation. They own part of the property in blue, plus they also own uh, Hilldale Springs and the property behind Hilldale Springs. And when they developed Hilldale Springs, they dedicated a portion of Utah Street and uh, Hilldale Springs Drive uh, right away for streets. Uh, I asked them if they would be willing to dedicate additional right away to allow Utah Street, let me bring it up here, Utah Street to extend south from Hilldale Springs to Peak Boulevard. They agreed to do that. Their uh, board met last week and they signed a deed dedication for an 80 foot wide right of way to allow that extension. Now, uh, with that being said, the resolution tonight is for the council to accept that deed dedication. If you accept it, our next step will be to go back to ODOT the city will make application uh, for them to remove the limits of no access at the intersection where Utah Avenue would then abut uh, Peak Boulevard. If we can get that removed, that'll not only open up a retail development to that intersection, but also farther west to allow more retail development. So uh, we would recommend approval of the resolution. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stow. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item four. Receive report and recommendations from study conducted by staff on juvenile justice methods in municipal juvenile court and take any necessary action. Councilor Coleman. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Mr. Tucker has been very helpful in terms of giving leadership to this study, which we're ready to present tonight. As many of you will recall, several meetings back, we said we wanted to look at avenues that we could pursue to help parents as well as those juveniles so that we can put them on path to be successful and not just have them penalized. You get it, Mr. Tucker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> we're going to go through these a little quickly, so certainly we'll come back and ask any questions. We're going to start off by giving a little background. Uh, uh, as you all can see on the screen, the authority for prosecution of juveniles arises from an interlocal agreement between the city, the district attorney, and the Muskogee County District Court. The interlocal agreement articulates the juvenile offenses that may be prosecuted under the city code and the punishment uh, limit, and those limits are, are there listed. All right. Juvenile court is held every Thursday at 4 p.m. when school is in session and then bi-monthly uh, during summer breaks. And let me say that uh, uh, former Judge Smith as well as uh, current Judge Tony Bradley Smith have done a wonderful job of being certain that uh, we do better about accommodating those parents and young people when they do arrive for court. Here are the programs that uh, we currently have. Friday night detention of military inspired uh, program with the counseling component tribes which is a community service program uh, Friday night drive which is a driver's education inspired program for those who are charged with a fine and Mr. T Tucker can correct me if I'm wrong but what this program does is it does keep these offenses from appearing on their record before they actually get their regular driver's license which we think is a, a really good plus offender solutions which is a theft prevention program and then community service where they can work off their fines by providing services to the community the additional uh, tools of the court, anger management, behavior assessments, alcohol, tobacco, essays, drug and alcohol assessments, tutoring, counselors reports, parents and classes. These are all good programs that we use, or good components of the program that we use to help our young people. 
uh, we did a three-year assessment. So we took a three-year sample of the juvenile offenses, and as you can see, uh, citations by agency from the Muskogee PD, Muskogee Public Schools, and others. And if I could just clarify, because that is difficult to read for us on the screen, I'm certain it's difficult for those at home. Um, but uh, those citations are 669 issued by Muskogee Public Schools, uh, 457 issued by uh, Muskogee uh, Police Department, leaving 156 representing um, uh, citations issued through the court's contempt powers, citizen complaints, and Hilldale Public Schools. And again, that's over a three-year period, so that's not a, a single year. Uh, these these are results that we're looking at now in terms of the offenses. This is also over a three-year period. Vandalism, uh, the number of citations, 34. Curfews, 59. Minors in possession of tobacco, 55. Truancy, 450. Disturbing the peace, 2. Uh, petite larceny, 101. Public intoxication, 20. Contempt or failure to pay, 44. Trespassing, 20. Assault and battery, 24. Contempt. 138, minor possession of low point beer, 2, disorderly conduct, 268, minor possession of intoxicating beverage, 27, resisting an officer, 37, and misrepresentation of age, 1, for low point beer. The uh, truancy and disorderly conduct during the three-year sample period, truancy and disorderly conduct were the highest number of violations charged against juvenile offenders. However, there's a reasonably low recidivism rate, which indicates that our program, as it stands, is doing some of what it needs to do, but there are some other things that we think we need to do to help it go a little further. The procedure for failure to pay or appear if a juvenile fails to appear for court or fails to satisfy his or her fines through community service. The following occurs. The parent or guardian is sent a notice of failure to uh, appear, failure to pay. Safe harbor per period begins where no warrant will be issued if the juvenile appears in court. After the safe harbor period, a warrant is then issued, and if neither the juvenile nor the parent appears within 90 days, a notice of failure to appear or pay, and a warrant is transferred to the parent or the guardian. And one of the things that we're going to look forward to as we offer these solutions is ways that we can help the parent and not just penalize them. So here are the recommendations. And let me say before I read these recommendations that Judge Tony Bradley Smith was an active and engaged member of the committee. So as a judge that handles these proceedings, she's well aware of what we're presenting tonight. Recommendation number one is that we amend City Code 54-111 to include the defense of self-defense to the crime of disorderly conduct. Currently, anyone who engages in any fight is guilty of disorderly conduct with no consideration for self-defense. So Mr. Tucker and I were going to demonstrate what that looked like, uh, but we were afraid we might hurt the other. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be a good look on camera. So we want to put something in place where we actually consider everything about the fight, not just that the person was uh, penalized because they actually may have been defending themselves. Recommendation number two, allow truancy fines to be satisfied with community service. And the community service program is really, really working because it allows these young people to work off those fines uh, through community service. The other recommendation number three is allow a parent with a municipal judge I'm sorry, allow a parent with a municipal juvenile warrant to satisfy the charge by participating in parents in classes. It has been our consideration or concern for some time that some parents do need the assistance that they need to do what they need to do to be parents. Uh, when I was growing up, my mother had me at 17 out of wedlock. But during that time when my mother had me, it literally was a village raising the children. Uh, everybody was everybody's guardian. A lot of parents now don't have that opportunity. And so we want to be certain that we give them the, the tools they need to be successful not just the penalty that they need to uh, correct their errors. <clears throat> Recommendation number four, <clears throat> collaborate with CIC to provide free and low cost counseling services. Uh, Mr. Tucker can elaborate, but one of the things that we've always missed, that we've always longed to have, is a counseling service in place that we can provide counseling uh, as a result of uh, drug or alcohol abuse, peer pressure, emotional challenges, um, because we do think if we're proactive, we will have a lower rate of recidivism and we can help parents as well as these young people uh, get back on the right track. And if we do these things, it only makes Muskogee better. It only builds our city. It only it, it demonstrates that we are vested uh, not just in retail, not just in industry, but we're vested in families and the sanctity of holding families together. So those are our, our recommendations uh, to the program as they have been presented on tonight. 
Uh, there may be count, uh, questions that Mr. Tucker or I can answer, uh, but barring any um, objection, I would recommend approval. Outstanding report. I mean, uh, I, I looked over it this weekend, and boy, it was really an outstanding report. It really gives a, a, a good view of what is going on. Uh, one of the questions that I would have, uh, who was in, uh, was, and I guess not, not who was involved rec necessarily in the recommendations of the committee, but I guess uh, was the schools involved in the recommendations? Uh, no. The only folks who uh, were part of this study were uh, court staff, uh, the prosecuting agency, which is my office, and uh, the judge. Okay. I guess the only concern that I would have is the, the biggest one here that is, that is, you know, doing the sentencing is the schools and to make sure that they're, they're on board with these recommendations. Uh, I don't know how they wouldn't be, um, but, uh, you know, you can see over, what, 50 percent, um, you know, is, is involving the school system. So I just want to make sure that the school system was involved and on track with those recommendations. I don't know why they wouldn't be, because this is really uh, in line, but I would just, uh, I would like to see their input into that. I think what we could do then, Mr. Tucker, is visit with the superintendent in a separate uh, meeting. Uh, and then if they have any concerns, Council Johnson, that are, are objections, then we can bring them back in as a part of a separate item. The other thing, um, if the recommendations are approved, um, for, most, for most of these recommendations, it will be direction to staff, meaning it will qu require further action. Mm -hmm. For example, bringing the ordinance back. Now, on uh, allowing the um, uh, uh, parents to... Sorry, that's this is what I'm talking about. Is the allowing truancy fines to be satisfied with community service? Um, you know, that is one of those things that is within the purview of the court in approving sentencing. And so, um, in talking with the judge, um, this was the only charge that we have within all of our charges where we made the uh, students or the juveniles pay. Now, most of them don't have jobs, so mom and dad's paying for it. Yep. And so that's the reason why we made this recommendation to uh, help free that up because, quite frankly, we would rather have the uh, good works that they're doing through the community service program to benefit the community than the fine because that's going to be a – when they add up, if there are multiple – uh, fines here, and as you can see, uh, the truancy, even though the re recidivism rate is lower than some of the other fines, it's still at around 20 percent. And so we do have multiple charges, and truancy is on a sliding scale. So the first is, is I believe, 99, 110, and then, uh, what was, and say that again? It was $50 per truancy. Yes, $50 per truancy, 310. Is the max, yeah. Um, we've changed them uh, within the uh, probably last couple of years uh, when our fines went up. So, and uh, I think this is going to be the greatest tell. I mean, there's every one of these is great recommendations, but I think uh, you know one of the biggest complaints is you know the impact that it is to parents financially. Usually, these these parents are already strapped, um, and you know you you've got a student that's truant and they don't know it, and it's that big of a cost. And it's not passed on to the student. It's passed on to the parent. They're having to pay the fine. Uh, so when you've got these type of tools that are going to be available, uh, these are outstanding. I, I just think we need to make sure that the schools are included in them. And again, I think there would be no reason why they would not want to, to make sure these tools are available for our community because really the offender is going to be doing that community service and it's not going to be impacting onto the parent. And I think you'll, the recidivism will be a lot less. And I, and I will tell you as one aside, um, former counselor Dan Hall will tell you that uh, the school does get the benefit of some of that community service, particularly when they have to work late uh, to clean up the football stadium. Yep. <laughs> so, but we will certainly do that, uh, Deputy Mayor. Outstanding job, though. Okay, so Marla, you made a motion? Yes, ma'am. Second. A second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Yeah, Ms. Member, recognized? Yes. <laughs> One thing I was like Judge uh, Smith does, Tony Smith, and I think Judge uh, Smith before her done the same thing. Like when you, you go to CCC, CIC, you also have, like I said, that gentleman's like a boot camp person, and he's, he's really strict. And you have, like I said, you know, they, they pick up uh, trash and stuff on Saturday and Sundays. They work eight hours to pay the fines. And then <clears throat> after they get through with all this paying the money, you know, working, they have to uh, 
bring their grades, and they also have to write an essay, each child up there. And on the theft, on the theft part of it, they make them, she makes them, um, <coughs> see, what is that? I'm trying to think what she does on that. Oh, <coughs> you have to go online to do a theft prevention program. So that, that helps the students also. So I've, I've been up there quite a few times, and I've learned a lot in that court, watching the students, watching the parents and stuff. And some of those children up there, they mistreat their parents. They'll talk to them any kind of way. Like you were saying, Grubb and Coleman, I know where I would talk to my parents like that. I'd be laying down on the floor. But nowadays you can't do that because you go to jail. Which that's, you know, that's not our problem, but that's the senators and lawmakers' problem. It created all this problem we have now. But those are some things, you know, that I can say I've, I've been there personally in court and seen a lot of things done. So I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? <coughs> yes, and the motion carries. Item five. <coughs> Discuss and take action to establish and populate an ad hoc committee for the purpose of researching and reporting on the feasibility of establishing a Bass Reeves African American History Museum within the city of Muskogee. Uh, Councilor Coleman. Yes, ma'am. Mayor and Council, we have been in discussion for several times now about the possibility of exploring how we can capitalize more on the Bass Reeves African American Museum being here in Muskogee. Uh, we've reached a general consensus that for so long Fort Smith Arkansas has made the uh, has been the beneficiary rather of an icon that should be uh, here in Muskogee and so we are in conversations now about establishing committee I'm going to read those names off then I'm going to ask Mr. Justin O'Neill our tourism director to come forward but the committee members will be comprised of myself Justin O'Neill Sharon Ray Dr. Virginia Schultz and Mr. Roger Bell and we would uh, then be tasked to explore what an Bass Reeves African American Museum would look like here in the city of Muskogee, since we believe, uh, several of us do, uh, that Bass Reeves should get his prominence here, not in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So I'm going to ask Mr. Justin O'Neill if he will come and tell us a little bit about what those possibilities and benefits would look like. Good evening, everyone. Could you give us your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Justin O'Neill, and I'm at 4311 West Altmogee. Um, so Bass Reeves is a uh, true American hero that's <coughs> finally getting his global recognition that he deserves. Uh, with movies like Hell on the Border, as well as uh, one of the top news shows for 2020 being HBO's new series The Watchmen, uh, and many others projects to come, this American icon is finally a pop icon. Uh, interesting fact, if you Google the name Bass Reeves, you can read over 13,400,000 results and while the world learns about the legendary lawman, they undoubtedly learn about Muskogee, Oklahoma. Uh, if you Google Muskogee, Oklahoma, you get uh, 11, 11 million four hundred thousand. So it's uh, pretty popular. Uh, as his final resting place, though, no other town can outshine or uh, out take uh, ownership of the connection that we have to Bass Reeves. Uh, this year, the Three Rivers Museum will host the 11th annual Bass Reeves Western History Conference. Each year, the two-day conference brings history buffs and Wild West enthusiasts from around the country to learn about Bass Reeves, uh, walk the same streets the legendary lawmen patrolled, and along with the conference, Muskogee is home to many Bass Reeves experts, passionately telling the story and teaching the world about Bass Reeves. Uh, we have watched this conference become more successful over the years, and this year we have made it a top priority in our marketing efforts for tourism. Uh, from a tourism perspective, uh, this having something like this is a dream come true. Uh, a local hero that we knew about is now being cast light on throughout the, you know, throughout the whole world, and so what it takes is how do we make sure that we're not letting this opportunity slip through our hands? Uh, what do we do? How do we capitalize on this and make sure that, that we're the center for Bass Reeves? Um, I believe a Bass Reeves African American History Museum is a fantastic idea, a place where you can draw people from all over the world to learn about the lawmen and then introduce them to other great names from Muskogee or show them names that they already know and how they're connected to Muskogee. 
I would love to be at the table for these discussions as we uh, discuss so that we can promote and assist in any way possible as tourism department, uh, especially the opportunity to cross promote between the other great museums here in Muskogee. Um, again, I wanna address my excitement about this uh, and uh, the opportunities, that, the things that we have planned for the future to further the legacy of Bass Reeves. I wrote that today. Thank but, you. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I don't, I, I don't know if you, I covered everything you wanted to You did, that was outstanding. Thank you. Move for approval. Second. Any further discussion? This is going to be a great addition to our community. I think so, too. And all mm -hmm. the stuff about Bass Reeves is really interesting. Very much so. I, uh, I'm 100% for the ad hoc committee looking at how we can celebrate Bass Reeves mm -hmm. in, in our community. Uh, the only thing I would caution against, uh, you know, our, our museums right now are struggling. And, you know, we want to make sure that, that we're supporting everything and how can we better identify and celebrate Bass Reeves with our, with our resources that we have here. Um, you know, I know that they were trying to raise uh, funding uh, for a bronze statue, uh, you know, for Bass Reeves on horse, you know. And so there are a number of ways that we can identify and celebrate. I don't know that another <laughs> building and another museum to support in our community um, is the way of doing that but I think that's uh, a decision for this ad hoc committee to, do, to decide. Any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stouts? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. Item six. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract between the city of Muskogee and Holloway, Updike, and Bellin Consulting Engineers in an amount not to exceed $69,800 for design of Country Club Road improvements south of Chandler Road or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley. Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, we're going to talk about streets for the next three items. and uh, I just want to get us started with... Um, um, a couple of years ago when council put uh, it on our, our put an initiative out that we need to improve streets, um, asking me what, what we needed, well, we needed money. And uh, Mr. Miller and council has gone out and, and worked hard and we have money to do a lot, a lot of things we couldn't do two years ago. And that's, that's appreciated that from our department that uh, we're getting that money now. Um, some of the things we'll be doing, um, we. The next item after this one will be the Smith Ferry Road project, which is a, uh, a joint a joint project with the Creek Nation, uh, where they're putting in about five million dollars for a project. Uh, we got an EDA grant that is um, uh, that, that's improving um, 43rd Street from Chandler to uh, Harris Road, and then a piece of Hancock on that. We we recently approved an agreement with the county um, for for Hancock and uh, South York Street, and um, and then we've also got the uh, the new CIP money, sales tax money, that's matched by a foundation grant, and um, this is the first uh, so-called de well design project that's coming out of that money. Uh, we're going to design this project. Um, one of the emphasis of that of that money is to uh, to work around schools and. Um, when our street advisory committee was looking at where we have problems around schools, uh, Creek Elementary came up always as the first problem because there's a lot of traffic congestion there. Um, so we put together this project, um, uh, and then the, the remain the, and other money is being spent in the zones, and we'll see uh, rolling out here very soon um, uh, the northeast zone, which will be our first zone with the new money, and uh, we're going to be looking at, at improving about 30 miles of street with with that zone when it comes out. So for the next four years, we're gonna see that type of, of, of length of streets being improved in all four zones. Um, so this project, um, if you, you can see on the, um, the, uh, the school back over here, what, what the problem is is two lanes, is fire station, school, drop off traffic, um, it just gets congested in the morning and afternoons and people get stuck there uh, getting in and out. Um, so what we're doing is, is adding uh, uh, a center turn lane to help get traffic in and out of the schools and, the, the, and allow the other traffic to get through, uh, including, including the fire station. Um, 
This does uh, dovetail with a project on the north side that uh, we already have designed. Um, it's really a drainage project, um, but also improves this, the roadway uh, on the north side about the same distance um, <laughs> as the one on the south side. So when complete, these two projects uh, will have this, this stretch of roadway, which is um, about half a mile of roadway, uh, improved through that intersection uh, to help traffic flow through there. It'll have curb and gutter, uh, sidewalk, um, and uh, it'll just be a much more improved uh, traffic area for the city. Um, uh, Hollow Rep, Black and Bellum uh, is doing the design for the project. They did the project on the north side also. So we selected them to do the uh, south side. Um, this is preliminary layout on here. There'll be a lot more details going into that to get into design. Um, the, the fee is reasonable, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions and recommend approval. This is going to be great for that area, and especially helping with the traffic coming in and out of the school, and especially with our new neighborhood going in. So I move for approval. Second. I Thank you. Is there a second? Ever second. She's going to have to quit that shouting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any discussion? That will also be helpful with the new homes going in that area also. Okay. May I be recognized, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Riley, <coughs> on the street project here, how's the, how about the infrastructure? What is the water lines? Yeah, part of the project will be to relocate all the utilities away from the street. So. Good. Okay. I was just concerned about that. Turn the floor back over you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item seven. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract between the city of Muskogee and Olson Inc. in an amount not to exceed $521,700 for design, right-of-way acquisition and construction phase services for East Smith Ferry Road widening and reconstruction between U.S. Highway 64 and Gulick Street or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley again. Yes, this is the, the project I mentioned earlier. Uh, we uh, worked with um, Creek Nation uh, in, for quite a bit of time d discussing this project with them and getting their, their uh, partnership um, in, in the way the agreement the agreement was approved uh, about a year ago. And um, the way it works is we're going to design, uh, remove, move the utility, buy the right of way, move the utilities, and turn it over to Creek Nation, and they take care of the uh, construction of the project and they pay for the construction of the project so our our part of this project is is paying for the design and and we actually do the utility relocations in right away but they do reimburse us for those those services so the design is is, is the um, city's share and the, the next item after this one will be about the drainage <laughs> offsite which which will be the city's share also um, so what we're doing um, we're, we're we're basically going to be a three-lane section. You can see three lanes. Um, there'll be a, um, a wide sidewalk um, on the um, north side of the road that will, um, and there'll be room to put a sidewalk on the south side, but it won't be part of this project. Um, probably hard to see, but um, the roadway extends on the other side of, of and tapers in on the other side of uh, Highway 64, and then on the other side of Gulick, and then we're we're looking at doing some realignment with Cherokee uh, as it goes north from uh, from Smith Ferry to to uh, correct the distance issue that we have there, where we have a lot of accidents and, and a lot of problems right there. Uh, and so everything here is preliminary, and then it'll all be worked out in final detail. But this will this contract will also um, do all the right of way acquisition. Uh, the, the Consultant will do all that right away acquisition services. Uh, we we will purchase the right away as part of that, and then it'll be reimbursed through the, through the Creek Nation. Um, uh, we'll have a set of utility relocation plans put together, and we will do that also, and then be reimbursed for the, for that work. Um, everything um, everything else would be three lane section again with with sidewalk on the, or 
a wide sidewalk on the north side so it could be used for multiple uses of, of bike walking and everything. Um, help improve some of the flow with the, um, with the school. And then the big deal is getting the, the drainage so that every time it rains, we don't have a, a, a flood down there. Um, but uh, the, the fees are in line with, with, with projects of this type. I mean, it is federally funded, so a lot of more right away uh, requirements come, come into play because of the federal funding. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions and recommend approval. When do we expect the construction to start on this project? The design is uh, about a two year process, including getting the right away. And so it, it's, it's slow. It's slow. <laughs> right, all right, I move for approval. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Madam Mayor, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Raleigh and the city manager for this because I think that it should be conveyed to Creek uh, Cherokee Nation rather that we think this is a wonderful opportunity and an example for what we may be able to do going forward to work with our tribes to be certain that uh, the city as well as the tribes benefit from collaborative relationships. So yes. thank you very much. Yes. Councilor Coleman, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And, and I want to point out that really the, the thanks need to go to Creek Nation. A $5 million project is, is a huge project for us. It's also a very big project for them to do in one single project. They do a lot of smaller projects, but this is one of the largest projects that they've done. So we appreciate them showing the faith in us as a partner to put $5 million into our community. Um, so yes, I think you're right on the money. Thank you. Just another example of all the good things going on around here. I'll be That's recognized right. with him. Yes. I'll be recognized. <laughs> I also like to thank you, Mr. Riley, and I also like to thank you, Mr. Miller, because, uh, like I say, Creek Nation, um, we thank them for their five million dollar project. And I know, Mr. Miller, you sat down with them a long time and discussed this. And you know, a lot of these candidates is running for council and this and that. They'll say, "Well, we done this, we done that." But I want to thank you, Mr. Riley and Mr. Miller, for doing what you do. Thank you. Okay, because they y'all y'all get the credit for this, not to see the count, not the councilors that's trying to run, or us up here. Y'all get the credit. Y'all the one deal with mm -hmm. these people every day. So I just want to make that point. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Where are we? Do we have a motion and a second? Yes, ma'am. Any further discussion? Roll call. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Vance. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item eight. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract between the city of Muskogee and Olson Inc. in an amount not to exceed $168,700 for design of East Smith Ferry Road off right of way drainage improvements or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley again. Yes, Mayor and Council. This is a, the companion project for, for this and um, for the Smith Ferry Road. Um, Off-site drainage is, is going to be on the city to take care of. If you see the, the large aqua bluish area, um, the plan is for that to be a large regional detention pond. Um, it's going to take care of the drainage. We, we can't get the drainage out of there without, without this. Um, and then we have Obviously, you know, we have issues in the meadows, so we need this type of pond to keep keep from exacerbating the issues there. Uh, we're also taking care of, of the drainage across this, this subdivision here, adjacent to it, um, right through here to, the, to these ponds. And um, so this, this becomes a large, it's a dry pond in dry seasons, if we ever have those again. Um, in the <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it, but it, it is a large area, um, quite a bit of right away there. Um, it, at this point, without more design, uh, you know, as we get into design and the geotech and the, and the topo and the sizing of the pond, um, it, it's, it's hard to say exactly how big it will be, but that's our, our best guess at this point. Um, so this will be uh, completely on the city of Muskogee. We'll use our stormwater funds to get this, this completed, and it'll, it'll be a great improvement to the area because that is a is a an area that has problems with drainage all the time and uh, i'm happy to answer any questions and recommend approval move for approval second any further discussion roll call deputy mayor wayne johnson yes evelyn hibbs yes. stephanie morgan yes marlon coleman yes ivory van yes Derek reed yes alex reynolds yes 
Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. Item nine. Consider approval to apply for the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant in the amount of $150,000 for the proposed renovations of Grandview Park or take other necessary action. <coughs> Mr. Wilkerson. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, I'd like to t uh, tell you about uh, this project at Grandview Park. Uh, the next two items are, are regarding the same project, uh, but there are two grants that we're applying for, so there are two separate agenda items. But uh, let me start on the first one to tell you, describe it to you a little bit about what the project is. Grandview Park is uh, south of Hilldale Elementary, and it stretches towards the east, and it's south of our fire station out there as well, the map. Uh, there's a conceptual plan here uh, before you that shows the property. It's approximately 30 acres in, in total of, of uh, parkland. This was originally uh, created back in the 1970s with this land and water conservation funds, of which we're going to be applying for again to renovate it. Uh, the Land and Water Conservation Program uh, inspects these uh, grant funded parks every so often and a few years back they were in Muskogee they went out there and they said they told us you know this this is uh, uh, park is deficient and it's uh, uh, it's it's in, in pretty bad shape and uh, you need to consider doing something uh, new there or, or uh, renovating it and so uh, it was originally uh, primarily a, a uh, adult softball uh, fields out there built in the 70s and of course when we built Hatbox uh, we put all of our organized sports out at Hatbox and all of our resources there and so this has been neglected we've not made these improvements uh, I I intentionally due, due <coughs> to the cost of uh, that type of improvement so uh, staff began to decide um, uh, what could we how could we best utilize this park and of course, uh, we also wanted to, to do that with in mind that how could we best, uh, or what are our best chances of getting this uh, uh, federal grant money? It is federal grant money. It's passed through the state, through the State Department of uh, Tourism and Recreation. Um, so uh, we know that our most popular items in our park system is our trails and our walking trails. And so there's uh, the two grants, the Land and Water Conservation Fund and the second, uh, 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 agenda item is uh, the uh, trail portion of this. So we've divided this out to, t to try to uh, take advantage. <coughs> There's maximums that, that apply to the grant program, uh, the trail program. So, uh, but basically um, the um, project consists of the trail system. It's about a, uh, there'll be a eight foot wide concrete trail uh, sidewalk that'll loop, that'll have a loop within the park, about a half mile loop, walking trail. It'll also connect to uh, make connections to the apartments there to the north. It'll make connections to the, uh, the pedestrian bridge that crosses Peak Boulevard. It connects the neighborhood to the north. We hope to make a connection to the south, <coughs> to the south neighborhood uh, on the other side of the golf course. Uh, we think that will make a great addition to that neighborhood in the park and even creating access from that south neighborhood to the, to the Hilldale Elementary School. Um, besides the walking trails, there's bike park amenities that we're calling out in, in this plan. And our playgrounds will be an adventure type playgrounds. It will not necessarily be a traditional uh, toddler type playgrounds, but uh, it's, there's a, a trend for a more adventure act, active type play for a uh, little older uh, uh, youth, you know, probably in the uh, uh, six to twelve year olds capacity so that's that's our theme that's our idea that we're going to do this is something that we don't have in Muskogee so this this will help make this park be a, somewhat of a destination for that type of play and that type of activity it'll also have picnic shelters it'll have a restroom it's got a huge parking facility there so it'll have a lot of nice park amenities in addition to those things that I've described so the land and water conservation fund we were asking for hundred and fifty thousand dollars it's a 50 50 match the total project, of the, the total cost of our pro project is $600,000. The trail portion has a maximum in, in of $240,000 requiring a 20% match of $60,000. So that's 300 of that, of that. So our land and water fund, we need $300,000. So it's a 50-50 match. So we're asking for 150,000. The city will provide the local match of $150,000, which will be our CIP money that we approved a year or so ago. 
and uh, hopefully we'll get both of these grant projects and we'll combine them into one project and build them at, at, at one time. But the trail, uh, the, uh, one of the grants is due at the end of this month and the other grant is not due until July, so it'll take some time before we know we'll, whether we're approved, but this is our this is our way to try to make a nice project with uh, as many of the resources as we can find. Any, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank yeah. you, Mark, for you and your staff working so hard putting this together. I move for approval. Second. Would you like to speak? Yes, I just, uh, uh, Mark, Mark said this, I want to emphasize this is a very grant dependent sort of project. So we're looking at it and we're seeing this is going to be a great amenity to our community. Um, and we're trying to leverage uh, our funds for uh, grant funds. Um, if we don't get the grants, we may not be able to do the project. So I want us to keep be realistic about that um, because the other thing is we are, uh, we'll see, I think this time next week, um, we're gonna look at the City of Muskogee Foundation to possibly help us with the match through um, their grant process as well. So uh, this is really a great uh, example from Mark trying to leverage city money to make sure there's additional money coming into our community to, to provide these things that we wouldn't otherwise have. And Mr. Wilkerson has a fine nose for finding those grants, and you, I commend you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I, I, let me, uh, I failed to mention too that this, of course this has been the park board, uh, we had a public hearing, we were required to do a public hearing, and the park board approved this in their January meeting. Um, uh, Superintendent Puckett is here, and we've met with them. We, we, the first thing we did was met with the Hilldale School System because we were a neighbor out there, and uh, they were enthusiastically in support of our project, so we're happy about that. And um, I, I actually did, and so I was going to show, I could have showed you this in the next agenda item. This is just some examples, it's just a couple of slides of what we try to build with this bicycle park idea in the primitive trails. This is, will be a place where kids can go out on their uh, off-road bicycles and learn how to do these type activities or just have fun. Uh, it'll be a challenge type course uh, where we'll build uh, this type of amenity for the, uh, primarily it's not really adult uh, facilities, it's for kids basically. And then the playground, when I say adventure playground, it's this kind of thing, it's this space net type thing where they climb and uh, can challenge themselves. <clears throat> Another example of that. Th these are all conceptual, and we, we, when we put the project together, we'll we'll have f final plans for all this. But this is the, in concept. This is what we hope to do. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Member, I recognize. Yes. <coughs> yes, Mr. Wilkerson, you probably remember this. I remember when we was doing Robinson Park. We applied for the same grant, Water and Land Conservation Grant. Yes. We got turned down the first time. Yes. Remember what we done the second time? Yes. You remember that? What we done the second time? No, remind me. Probably. No, <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, yes. What we done the second time as a community aso association in Robinson Park, what we did was we went to the community and we went and got 10 to 15 letters of recommendation. Now I know you remember it. And we got it from the schools. We got them from the uh, state senators, uh, state representatives, uh, churches. Just anybody we could get or let them recommend nursing homes and we got that grant yes you know and I think that helped in getting that grant so y'all might look yes. at it, you know I mean y'all might look into that uh, we have we've got we've gotten a good start in getting our letters of recommendations for 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 the for that project okay. in particular and, and, and as a reminder the examples of these grants are uh, Civitan Park which is wrapping up right now is a land and water conservation fund so the state paid for half of that project. And our most recent trail project was Hatbox, the trail loop that we built out uh, around the softball fields. That was a, the recreation trail fund that's on the next agenda item. Turn the floor back over you, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, okay, we're gonna uh, vote on item nine. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item 10. Consider approval to apply for the Oklahoma Recreation Trail Funds Grant in the amount of $240,000 for the proposed renovations of Grandview Park or take other necessary action. Mr. Wilkerson. Um, 
the, this is uh, the project just described, uh, the second grant opportunity. It's an 80-20, so they give us a larger share of money. That's the maximum amount that they'll award to us, so we want to try to make it, take advantage of the maximum. In, your, in, your, in the agenda items, we, we actually created two separate budgets for you, and we put them in there, and actually it's for our grant, it's, it's for our grants, but I put both budgets in there so you can see we actually have to pull out the trail pieces out of it and put into one application, and then we put the playgrounds and the picnic shelters in a different, in the land and water conservation applications. That's just for clarification. We, uh, we recommend your approval. So Mark, Move what, if approval. We, what if we get one grant and we don't get the other grant? <clears throat> well, we'll um, uh, have to evaluate that when we get there. I think that we can build one or not the other. In other words, I think we could do the trail project and put the trails in, but we just wouldn't have a restroom and the picnic shelters at that time. Okay. Or we'll look and see what other opportunities we can have to get the, uh, get the additional money to go ahead and get it built. Well, and why I ask that, this is definitely a grant-funded mm -hmm. driven project. We would like to see them both happen at the same time, and definitely that's, that's our vision. But, you know, when it's grant-driven, we, we want to see what, what can happen if we, <coughs> one of them does not come through. Yeah. I would, I'm pretty optimistic, uh, mainly because of the type of, uh, the, 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 especially for the trail portion, because part of their, uh, what they look for is connectivity to, uh, to communities. And uh, in this case, we're, across, we're able to cross highway, the Peak uh, Boulevard mm -hmm. to that neighborhood to the north. And then if we can make the connection th uh, uh, to the south, we, we'll, we'll connect those neighborhoods together and to the school and to the park and I think they'll really like that as far as the the grant people themselves move for approval and second discussion it was never recognized yes. well, last time I really hope, hope and pray this grant does come through because I hope councilman mm -hmm. I mean ex-councilman Hall is listening to my voice right now because he's always telling me it's that in war three we took all these parks so this will have two parks in War II, correct? That's correct. <laughs> Councilman uh, Reynolds, mm -hmm. Councilman Stout, our park. you'll have two parks. And, uh, you know, and so, like I said, I'm glad. I, I hope this grant does come through <laughs> because, like I said, Councilman Hall always teased me all the time about that. I mean, me and Councilman exactly. Reed got all his parks. We, just get, we just like giving you a hard time, Ivory. Mm -hmm. I understand. Hey, <laughs> I ain't with we you. still love you. It's, fun, <laughs> it's funny you bring this up because the week that we decided this is the project that we're going to pursue and we start pulling it all together, the very next week, uh, Councilman Hall announced his <laughs> resignation from the council. I didn't have a chance to say we got you another park. But. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, Mark. <laughs> Turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item 11. Consider approval to award lowest bid to Telequaw Glass for station number three renovations in the amount of $48,166.86 or take other necessary action. Mr. Wilkerson. Uh, Mayor and council members, this is the uh, windows door glazing in the station three project, the old fire station on West Olmogie. It's basically all the window openings and all the door openings the, the, uh, are part of this uh, project. Uh, the specifications were sent out to uh, various glass companies. We had three bidders. Uh, this is a uh, low bid, uh, significantly lower, and we recommend uh, this uh, low bid from Talco Glass. Move for approval. It's exciting to see the progress we're making on Station 3 for the seniors. Yeah. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes. And the motion carries. Item 12. Consider approval of refinancing Oklahoma Water Resource Board loans or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, this is a companion to the uh, agenda item we had in MMA. Uh, both bodies need to approve uh, this item. Again, this opportunity to save. $260,000 by refinancing those two projects, and we do recommend approval. Move for, for approval. approval. Second. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. 
Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item 13. Consider <coughs> approval of a professional services agreement with Michael S. Bates, Labor Relations Consulting Services of Tulsa, Oklahoma, to provide labor relations services to the City of Muskogee covering the time frame of fiscal year 2020-2021 as well as related employee labor relations work as determined by the city and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement or take other necessary action. Ms. Plunkett. Madam Mayor, members of the council, this is an annual agreement with Michael Bates. Um, a little bit of history for those of you who are new on the council. Mr. Bates served as our part-time HR director prior to me coming on board. Um, I took over um, HR director in 2012. Prior to serving the city of Muskogee, Mr. Bates retired as the HR director from the city of Tulsa. Um, he's got a plethora of knowledge. He currently negotiates for probably four or five other cities as well. Um, he provides um, the <coughs> chief negotiation services for police and fire and has since 2014, um, even before that. Um, and this is a agreement um, for this next fiscal year um, to continue those negotiations as the chief negotiator for the city. Um, as you can see from the, um, from the item that I submitted, uh, Mr. Bates's um, services have continually decreased in cost over the years. Um, in 2014-15, we started out with about $18,000. The next year it increased, but then it has been de decreasing um, and even significantly decreased in the last couple years. 2019 to 2020, only $3,700 um, was allocated to Mr. Bates for his um, negotiating services. I recommend approval of the contract that I handed out this morning or this evening. Um, it is revised for the city manager's signature as that is what the agenda item stated. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. No. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yeah. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Thank you. Item 14. Consider the appointment of Teresa Shadoin to the Historic Preservation Commission to serve a three-year term beginning January 28, 2020 and ending December 31, 2023, replacing the expired term of Sue Tolbert or take other necessary action. Uh, this is my item and Teresa lives in the Founders Place uh, and is interested in preserving the history of uh, the homes and neighborhoods in that area. And I uh, move the approval of her being on the Historic Preservation Committee. Commission. I second that. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item 15. Consider the appointment of Michael Bartley to the Uniform Building Code, Code Appeals Board to fill the unexpired term of Jack Bethany beginning January 28, 2020 and ending April 30, 2021, or take other necessary action. Councilor Van. Yeah, this is my partner, Mr. Barkley. <laughs> this week I received uh, a call and two people recommended this, Mr. Barkley. I've never met him, so I got his telephone number and I called him. And the people that recommended him to me, I respect him highly. Because like I said, uh, I believe if a person's gonna be on the building code, Uniform Building Code Appeals Board, they should know something about building, they should be quality builders. And I talked to him and <clears throat> he told me he's been building since 20, uh, he was 25 years old. Not only, he's a high-end builder, he builds cu custom homes. So I figure if he, he builds custom homes out in our, our country club, I figure he does a real, well, good job. And you know I'm all about quality and craftsmanship. So like I said, he, he, he convinced me over the telephone and like I said, the people that appointed him, I respect you and thank you for letting me know about him. So I make a motion to appoint Mr. Barkley to the uh, building uniform, uniform Building Code Appeals Board. Second. Discussion? Roll call. 
Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Ivory Band. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Janie Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. We have one person who has signed up to speak, our own Jamie Stout. <laughs> Jamie Stout, 319 Kingsway. Um, we have many great events in town, and this past weekend was the BRI bull riding at the, at the Civic Center. On Saturday night, there was over 4,000, probably around 4,000 people there. It was sold out crowd. Um, they did a phenomenal job putting it on. I just think I'd like to thank the guys that put the bull riding on for coming, choosing Muskogee to host their events. They have another one planned for May 5th, so mark your calendars. Um, and then just a shout out to John and the Civic Center staff for just the outstanding job that they do in preparing for all the events and around the clock work they, they do from tearing down from one event to get ready for the next. So I just wanted to give a shout out to them. And show your oh. Thank you very much. They have one been. said I needed to show her. <laughs> oh. The bull riding people, they presented the council with jackets on Saturday evening as well. Mm -hmm. That's very good. <laughs> and that concludes our agenda, so thank you for coming. <laughs>